Well, I think we've um, we've just come through uh, you know quite an interesting year in, two, in two, 2018, um, which has been a game of two halves really. Um, very strong economic growth across the world, synchronised, uh, and then that has uh, uh, decoupled, if you like, with the US continuing to put through some really good numbers in terms of the macro, um, and we think in terms of uh, earnings that that all continues as we go through into 2019. So quite a strong backdrop, um, but of course we have um, uh, not quite the same in Europe, where uh, I think we've got to get through Brexit uh, before companies start to, to really invest and drive that capex into growth in the future. Uh, in terms of emerging markets, of course, we've seen quite a, 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 a derating of the emerging market complex, particularly in China, uh, and uh, we think that absolutely there could be a bounce there as we get into 2019. As income investors, we're always looking for those uh, obviously, uh, uh, those sectors that can generate really strong income returns in terms of dividends and dividend growth. Um, and you know, income as a style is lagged because we've really had a, a tech-led uh, bull market for the last two to three years. Um, but actually, we can see signs of that starting to unravel a little bit um, and that some of the more uh, dividend-producing sectors, um, such as utilities, telcos, healthcare, for example, we think are starting to do better, and we've certainly certainly seen that that shift in sector rotation going on over the last two to three months, and we expect that to continue as we go into 2019. I think we have very good near-term earnings visibility, and that is reflecting the price stability I expect in 2019. Looking further out than that, I think we have to keep an eye on the shape of the Democrat presidential candidate field. I think that that will ultimately inform equity risk premia in the sector on a longer term time horizon. Good, so a, a really nice yielding sector that we think we're going to get some dividend growth from. I think that the US bank space has been an excellent place to be in the past two years. However, in my opinion, the Goldilocks scenario that the US banks have benefited from, so higher volumes, higher margins and very low provisioning, I think that Goldilocks scenario is now over. I think that Europe have yet to have their Goldilocks scenario. So at the margin, I am becoming more enthusiastic uh, towards European banks over US banks. And is there a particular region uh, you want to call out there that um, could benefit from uh, perhaps uh, um, you know, uh, Europe's uh, first interest rate move, which could come at the end of 2019? Yes, so I think we should focus on the rate sensitive constituencies within the European market as certain banks are able to reprice their loan book within one year, where there, whereas for others it could take seven years or even ten years in some circumstances. Well, there are quite a number of risks, really. Um, but um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, absolutely the equity markets um, you know, are quite well set up. Um, we've had some volatility in October, uh, really driven by a uh, rise in bond yield um, in the US. Um, but we think the market looks a lot cheaper than perhaps it did earlier on in the uh, year. So as we go into 2019, you know, valuations look supportive. Um, but there's a risk, of course, that the Fed uh, uh, tighten too quickly. They withdraw liquidity too quickly. Um, in terms of uh, quantitative easing. We know that the balance sheet in the US, uh, in terms of uh, the, the uh, country's balance sheet, you know, will start to shrink next year. Um, and you know, that's a different backdrop to, to one that we've been used to, where equities have been able to gorge on cheap liquidity for the last 10 years. Um, we also think there's a lot of political instability across uh, the world, not least, of course, what we're seeing with Brexit. Uh, emerging markets, of course, um, lots of risk there in terms of uh, they haven't liked a rising dollar. Uh, oil prices have been high, uh, and so therefore the, the effect has been exacerbated, uh, and that has led to a sharp sell-off. But we think that valuations are looking cheap. We believe that the dollar should probably top out uh, because it's been too strong, uh, and that should lead to you know, a better backdrop as we go into 2019. Well, there are a number of themes that we follow. We like to look at uh, long-term structural growth because we really believe that that's the best type of growth. Um, and one of the things we're looking at at the moment is uh, electrification in vehicles. Uh, we have some exposure there, which we think is very exciting. Uh, the auto complex, of course, is, uh, has been very weak over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, uh, but we're looking uh, not just at the OEMs, uh, really at those people that are or companies that are providing, uh, if you like, um, kit that goes into cars for electric vehicles, whether that's for hybrid in terms of 48 volt systems. Uh, in terms of ADAS, which is assisted driving, uh, and of course car infotainment. 
Uh, this, we think, is a big growth area and uh, will serve uh, income investors well if we get the, the stock selection right. Well, I think um, certainly you know, having um, you know, a really keen eye on uh, environmental, social and governance uh, in terms of uh, us integrating that into our investment process, I like to call it an investment system because it's a, a process in itself, is really important and something that we think the market really does miss. Uh, we spend a lot of time with our corporate management teams trying to understand their culture uh, and how they are approaching uh, uh, really you know, allocating capital within their own businesses. Uh, are they doing it sustainably? Uh, are they uh, uh, remunerated as a, uh, as a group of managers of the company to make sure that their environmental footprint um, is improving? Um, that sort of uh, behaviour sets the culture uh, of the company from the top down uh, and that, we think, will lead to material uh, better shareholder returns for us as investors.